So I'm thinking um, energy solutions are maybe like simplified. Like, yeah, neon, maybe different colors. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? No? Welcome back guys and if you're new here, welcome to Solar Advice, the channel that makes energy solutions simplified. Today, three reasons why I don't think you should go off grid. Now you might be thinking, isn't that the whole idea to go off grid and get off that stinky coal power? Well, yes it is, but there are some caveats and I'm going to go through the rationale behind this. Now just to be clear on what off grid actually means. now. Don't take my absolute word for this because it's not exactly like this in the thesaurus but off-grid essentially means you're producing your own power consuming it and storing it so reason number one okay if you're off-grid you're completely on your own you're independent from any other energy source so you're reliant on your solar for the day and then the rest is going to be your battery so this includes when the sun starts to go down the whole evening and also when the sun starts to rise and that's quite a number of hours to put it in perspective in south africa in the winter times uh, we have less sunlight the average day will be around 10 hours and for those 10 hours six of them are usable for charging your battery so with only six hours of usable sunlight the rest of the time which is going to be around 16 to 18 hours you will have to use your battery backup and if you're thinking about a backup generator then if you want to have one of those dirty stinky things then we no longer could be friends because well you're not going to be able to hear me are you okay so backing up all those hours so this roughly go through how much you might need so say the evening you're using around four kilowatts and then during the night you're using maybe another four kilowatts to charge your phone and run your fridge and then another four kilowatts then for the morning period so in total that's a whole 12 kilowatt hours that you'll need for that complete period. Then don't forget uh, for those overcast days and those rainy days uh, where the sun is not giving you enough power you will need to have a battery backup for that too because don't forget you're not going to be tied to the grid. So this calculate that you're not going to use your washing machine and things like that and that equals to say 10 kilowatts. So adding 10 kilowatts to the other battery bank that we just calculated that's 22 kilowatt hours. That's a monster of a battery backup. So that's my first reason. Uh, it forces a need to have a large battery backup, which will essentially cost a little bit of a small fortune. On to reason number two. Now, taking into account that your battery bank is quite large, you will also need to extend your array. Now, the reason why you would want to do this is because you need to charge that big beast, um, but also you want to take advantage of as much sunlight as you can you can get. So even on the cloudier days, you can still absorb some of that extra sunlight. Um, this we call over paneling. And the problem with this is that you are overproducing all the time and a lot of it will go to waste. Okay, to give you an example, in my situation, I use around 60 kilowatt hours per day. Uh, for the battery backup that I would need and also to power my household, there's just simply not enough space on my roof for all those panels. So that's the second reason, over paneling and the cost of over paneling. And also don't forget, there's gonna be a tremendous amount of waste because you're gonna produce all this energy and there's nowhere else for it to go. On to reason number three, off-grid inverters. They're just not as good as hybrid inverters. The build quality isn't as great. Uh, the warranties aren't as long. They don't blend the energy sources together, making them less efficient and they're not IP65. That doesn't count for all off-grid inverters. There are cheaper ones and they're more expensive ones. When Solar Advice has issues with inverters, 99% of the time it's an off-grid inverter. And typically this is due to the setup um, with installation and also they're not as robust as other types of inverters so they get damaged quite easily. Bonus reason, longer return on investment. Now you've just spent on extra batteries, extra paneling, maybe even a larger inverter. This is gonna take you longer to recoup that investment. Okay, so what's the alternative? So you might be thinking, damn Neil, such a Debbie Downer about off-grid. And I am a little, so I am a little biased, but 
If you don't mind the uh, longer return on investment period and obviously the bigger expense, or you, if you simply don't have a choice, then I'm fully behind it. So the alternative option is to be on slash off grid. So basically they drop the need for a larger battery backup for those rainy days. It dropped the need for all the solar paneling as well. And they also drop the need for a larger inverter in case you had to increase your inverter size. Essentially, what you're gonna do is use the grid for those rainy day backups. Now, yes, you're gonna be paying for grid power, but considering the weather in South Africa, there's not too many of those days. And with that in mind, your payback period is a lot less too. So with the savings that you will make thereafter, you can put it right back into your system and add that extra battery if you require. So now you know my reasons for not going off-grid. I hope this video has helped you decide whether going off-grid is the right choice for you. If you uh, agree with me or disagree with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So please don't forget to comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, today's video is about... Yeah. Inverters are called... No, man. And it also drops the, <laughs> the larger sound. Yeah, maybe I should do that again. Stinky power. Coal power? Power. How's that sound? Cool. I just say hi. Don't put that in the blue <laughs>